The Mega Borg is still anchored off the coast tonight and may not be in any danger of sinking just yet, but the situation is much worse this evening. Let's get the latest now from B.B. Burns at the Coast Guard Base in Galveston. B.B.? It's been a very frustrating day because there's so much going on here, but really nothing that is actively fighting this fire yet. There is still only the possibility of trying to do something about the fire tomorrow. So we wanted to share with you some of the activities that have happened down here today. Okay. Well, shortly after noon, there were five explosions reported aboard the ship. Uh, they were described as quite large explosions. Burning crude oil is now pouring from the cargo holes, just what the Coast Guard did not want to see. But the Coast Guard is not using booms and skimmers to contain the oil, even though they have them on the scene. There are also two airplanes on standby with plenty of dispersant spray to use in the oil if needed. Our plan right now is to let it burn. It's burning oil, and as it burns, it removes itself from the water. So we're going to let it burn as much as we can. Our helicopter crew recorded the mega board dropped a few feet in a matter of minutes, adding to fears that the ship will go down. We don't think that it's sinking. We think that that healing is caused by a cargo shift rather than more water entering the vessel. The big problem now is finding the right equipment to fight the fire aboard the ship. Special foam has to be flown in from Europe and the East Coast. Water cannot do the job alone. That lack of preparedness is not making the people of Galveston feel very safe, since there are 70 to 90 tankers unloaded offshore each month. We have higher tanker traffic. We have more vulnerability. So that Texas should be, in my opinion, the Gulf Coast should be number one for the attention of the federal government right now. About 3 o'clock this afternoon, the two bodies of the ship's crew members were brought back to Galveston. But the firefighting can still not begin until tomorrow, until all the foam arrives. All the Coast Guard can do is hope the ship remains stable tonight. Now, the Coast Guard has kind of been downplaying the situation, but remember, there are 38 million gallons of oil aboard that tanker, and even in the Valdez incident, only 11 million gallons hit the beach. So, in other words, if something really happened to that tanker and it unleashed all that oil, we're talking about a spill that would be at least three, maybe even four times the magnitude of the Valdez. The Coast Guard is being very optimistic at this point, but right now, with these recent explosions and with more oil coming out of the tanker, a lot of people down here in Galveston are very worried. B.B., stay there just for a second. Let's talk about this a little bit. The, uh, have they said at all what the probability factor is? Of the, anyone said to you privately what the probability factor is of this thing sinking? Uh, I, they really don't want to talk about that at all, Tim. Uh, we're really having a hard time getting a good estimation out of the Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. They keep telling us, as you heard in uh, uh, some of the things that the gentleman said, uh, Mr. Nelson, in uh, my report, that the cargo is simply shifting around, and that is what is causing this uh, healing. Uh, if you look at a tanker, the back end of the tanker is the heel. When it's going down, that's called the healing. Now, that is where this water, the spraying of the water, has been going on to fight the fire, and that is what's been causing it, they think, to be begin to heal or to begin to go down on that end. They don't know if it's going to go down completely, but our crew that photographed it this afternoon and even as late as an hour ago saw that there was a considerable drop in the uh, elevation of that tanker. So that's the question now. Now until it actually goes down, they will not begin to deploy any of the booms or skimmers or begin to use the dispersant sprays. That would be another step in the process. And also, as far as where the oil will go, that's a big question. Everybody wants to know if there is going to be a spill, where is it going to go? Well, it looks like now, at least from what the Coast Guard tells us, the weather is still good out there. The seas are not too rough. It's still on top because it's light crude. It would probably go more toward the South Texas area. It would not hit the northern coast. But of course, currents change, and we really don't know where it would go if indeed that tanker broke open. BB, one last question before we let you go. Uh, you mentioned uh, the Exxon oil spill. How does this compare to that? Is this the same type of oil as was spilled during the Exxon Valdez? Uh, it's not my understanding. This is oil from the west coast of Africa. It is very, very light crude. Uh, remember, the Exxon Valdez spill happened very, very close to shoreline. This is very, very far out. So actually, a different technology would be used. That is the dispersant spraying, which was not very effective in Valdez. To spray on the oil to break it up would be used here, uh, theoretically, if there were a problem here. That was not very effective up here. So in some respects, they're very different. But as I said before, if you look at the potential, we're not trying to scare people, yeah. but if you look mm -hmm. at the potential, there is still 38 million gallons of oil aboard that ship, and it's pouring out now. They're saying it's burning up, but there's still a lot of oil aboard that ship. They'd like to get that fire out and then be able to unload all that oil. That's the safest thing to do. Okay. okay. BB Burns at the Thanks, Coast Guard Base. Thank you very much.